This conference will now be recorded. This conference will now be recorded. Hello students, I'm Dr. Divya from T19. So we are in the 10th chapter now. 10th chapter, this is the last part or part three. Okay, so this is, we are moving to the last part of 10th chapter. So up to that, what and all we have learned? We have learned about microorganism or how they are in human welfare or how it is associated with human welfare. Uh, so first we were discussing about uh, the roles of microorganisms or microbes so we had discussed about the presence of microorganism actually these microorganisms are present in soil then water uh, then they are present inside our body also right in animals and plants everywhere they are present so in normal life wherever that normal life is impossible in such cases also this microorganisms can live uh, like in extreme hot condition, cold condition, and inside body and under soil, everywhere they can live. So, so means they have some microorganism, not about all those microorganisms, some microorganisms, they have special capacity or they have uh, different, uh, different types of microorganisms are there. They are uh, adapted for such conditions. So uh, we have learned about fungi, bacteria, protozoa, plant and animal viruses, everything. We have uh, we have uh, an idea about all these things. So then we learned about the uh, prions and viroids and all, right? Then just now we said they are present deep in the soil or sometimes it will be present in extreme hot condition or extreme cold condition and all. So there are they are of different types. Then we learned about different types of bacteria, road shaped bacteria, spherical bacteria, the with flagella and all we have learned. So just I'm giving an overall idea about this chapter because we are moving to the last part. Then in household product. This microorganism presence of microorganism in household products. Uh, so we are using uh, these 
products every day we are using in this product in that what is the role of microorganism like curd curd and all we are using every day we are using so microorganisms like uh, lactobacillus lactic acid bacteria they grow in milk and they will convert that milk into curd so during the growth during the growth of that lacto uh, lactic acid bacteria that produces some kind of acids what that acids will do that will coagulate and that will partially digest those milk proteins then in this curd what is the uh, nutritional benefit like in curd uh, that vitamins uh, which one is present b12 vitamin b12 that is present especially that one is present compared to milk it is rich in vitamin b12 so in our stomach this uh, lactic acid bacteria that is having a very beneficial role and next we learned about cheese that is very old food item right so in uh, in that microbes are used to make that so it is Uh, what is actually this cheese it's a concentrate of milk fat okay then which protein is present in uh, milk casein casein is an important protein which is present in milk okay then different varieties with different types of cheese are there then we learned about bread in bread making or in in the preparation of bread dough uh, it is based on fermentation technique so baker's yeast saccharomyces cerevisiae that is the baker's yeast and puff the appearance of that dough it is due to the production of carbon dioxide during that fermentation period with the help of this saccharomyces cerevisiae that puff the appearance will be there that is due to the production of carbon dioxide during that fermentation okay this carbon dioxide during that baking period along with the uh, ethyl alcohol that will evaporate during that baking time and that's why bread is porous on pores will be present on bread right so many holes or pores will be present on bread it is due to the evaporation of carbon dioxide and uh, along with what along with ethyl alcohol so during that fermentation or bread making uh, time that a puffed appearance of dough will be there and that is uh, while bread making this carbon dioxide that is puffed appearance is due to the production of carbon dioxide and that carbon dioxide will evaporate during that baking time okay that is the reason for that porous and soft appearance of bread next dosa and idli batter in that also that fermentation it is due to bacteria then toddy that is a traditional ding drink uh, in south india it is there uh, in some part they are using that that fermented sap that is a fermented sap okay so all these things we learned then in industrial products so in the case of industrial products so many products which are very important for human life that is uh, beverages and antibiotics mainly beverages and antibiotics that uh, microbes are used in the synthesis of this beverages and antibiotics okay so in industrial scale for the production of all these things that microbes should grow in very large very large vessels or containers that is called as fermenters this and all one more question i have told while discussing about that so fermenter what is a fermenter that is an important question then fermented beverages we have learned about fermented beverages also so especially in alcoholic fermenters yeast yeast and yeast species it is used for the fermentation process okay then for ethanol production and all this malted malted cereals then molasses then fruit juices all these are they produce uh, ethanol by fermentation so after fermentation it will become ethanol so molasses they are the most common substrate the most common substrate for this ethanol production is uh, molasses 
okay then wine beer whiskey brandy rum all these all these are among that wine and beer they are produced without distillation so low alcohol concentration is present in in wine and beer the percentage of alcohol it is less in wine and beer okay then whiskey brandy rum and all they are produced by distillation wine and beer without distillation and whiskey brandy and rum and all with distillation or uh the distillation of that fermented broth okay that means alcohol concentration or alcohol content is more see this sir in previous classes we have discussed all these things that's why i'm not sharing the screen just to revise up to that topic then today's portion i'll share the screen so in those things and all alcohol concentration is more okay then in the last class we learned about antibiotics what is antibiotic the antibiotics they are the chemical substances and they are produced how we are producing antibiotics by with the help of these microbes and they can kill uh, they can kill the growth of other microbes okay they can control or they can kill the growth of other microbes okay so antibiotics means they are the chemical substances which are produced with the help of some microbes some microorganism with the help of some microorganism we are producing anti uh, antibiotics and for what purpose we are using this antibiotics to reduce or to uh, retard the or to kill the growth or to kill some microorganism some disease causing microorganism we are killing okay then then we learned about uh, chemicals enzymes then bio active molecules and all in that what and all we have learned uh, what is bio active molecules the important topics important questions i am discussing from the previous topics so bioactive molecules means they are the molecules and um, they are functional in living system okay or they can interact with their components they, uh, that is called as bioactive molecules so microbes uh, they are used for the commercial and industrial production of such uh, some uh chemicals this kind of bioactive molecule or such chemicals like uh, we can say that enzymes then alcohols organic acids all these things okay see aspergillus niger it's a fungus so the product their product citric acid is the product and for what purpose we are using this in dyeing inks then for in medicine and in preservation of foods all this purpose then acetobacter acetate that is another bacterium then uh, for which is a product acetic acid we are making acetic acid with the help of that and uh, acetic acid it is used in the preparation of vinegar so such kind of questions you may get for neat exam then clostridium clostridium species that is another bacterium butyric acid that is a product then lactobacillus we have already told that bacterium lactic acid in curd curd formation okay so such simple questions and direct questions you will get from this chapter then in the commercial production of uh, alcohol saccharomyces cerevisiae yeast that is used for the commercial production of ethanol then we learned about enzymes enzymes that is very important in this see in uh, industry in industrial usage and medicinal usage actually 1 to 1.5 percentage of the total enzyme among the total enzymes 1 to 1.5 percentage only uh, used in this industry and medicine okay some important enzymes are lipases lipases they are mainly used in the uh, detergent formulations 
because they are helping or they are um, useful in the removal of oily stains okay oily stains from the laundry then uh, actually they are obtained uh, from this it is obtained from candida candida species one candida species okay then proteases pectinases and all uh, they are proteinases and uh, proteinases and uh, proteases and pectinases they are helping in fruit juice for clearing or for clarif uh, clarifying that fruit juice okay that makes uh, with the treatment of these enzymes that fruit juice will become very clear then very 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 important enzyme which we need to learn is cyclosporin a that is very important during that enzyme part discussion i discussed about the cyclosporin a cyclosporin a that is immunosuppressive agent that is acting as an immunosuppressive agent where in organ trans transplant patients in organ transplant patients it is used as a immunosuppressive agent okay and it is produced from the fungus trichoderma polysporum you have to uh, write down all these points trichoderma polysporum there is no indirect question everything is direct in this chapter then next we learned about in sewage treatment how how microbes are involved in that we learned about primary treatment and secondary treatment uh primary treatment in the sense of uh, floating debris that will be removed from the um sewage through filtration first is, uh, first what they will do they will do through filtration and sedimentation they will remove the floating uh, floating de uh, debris first that is sequential filtration through sequential filtration they will remove the floating debris then next step is so that the big particles will get removed next is sedimentation sedimentation means that a small um, soil particles and that small pebbles they will be removed how they'll get removed they'll get removed with the help of sedimentation so through sedimentation they'll remove the grit okay grit means soil and small pebbles then in secondary treatment what they will do secondary treatment otherwise it is called as biological treatment see from that name biological treatment there some microbes or uh, some biological agents are used or there we are taking the help of some biological agents that's why biological treatment secondary treatment is otherwise called as biological treatment so that primary effluent which is from the first treatment after the primary treatment the effluent will be there that primary effluent will be passed into large tanks that tanks will be having aeration and uh, mechanically air will be pumped into it okay there we learned about biochemical oxygen demand then uh, where the biochemical oxygen demand is more or the greater the biochemical oxygen demand of that waste water their uh, polluting potential will be more okay that we have learned then we learned about activated sludge uh, in that then next about what we learned we learned about uh, in the production of biogas how microbes are involved in the production of bi biogas we learned about methanogens then what is biogas we learned about biogas that is mainly which which one is contained in that M methane methane is the important or main gas which is produced by microbial activity and that can be used as a fuel also so the major components of biogas which are the major component of biogas that is methane 50 to 70 percentage is methane and it is highly inflammable then other gases which are present carbon dioxide then other gases 
will be 10 nearly 10 percentage okay that bacteria are collectively called as methanogens or they are commonly known as methanogens which are helping then methanobacterium then we learned about So up to that, we have learned. Now we are going to, in today's class, we are going to learn about biocontrol agents. Okay. Microbes as biocontrol agents. So how these microbes are helping in the biocontrol? So what do you mean by biocontrol? Biocontrol means use of biological methods for controlling plant disease so for controlling the plant actually this biocontrol agents mainly they are used in the pest control and also for controlling the plant disease uh, biological methods are used that is called as biocontrol So you know that in uh, nowadays in society there are uh, we are using more chemicals so uh, for what as insecticide and pesticide we are using chemicals mainly we are using chemicals so these chemicals are very toxic and they, uh, you know that it is very harmful but still we are using that and it is polluting the soil water uh, then fruits vegetables everywhere you are using pesticides and chemicals so our soil is getting polluted through the usage of this weedicides and all so for removing weeds we are using weedicides see in large fields and all what they will do to remove the fields they are using weedicides so indirectly it is polluting the soil also it will kill the weeds but along with that that will pollute the soil So normally we are using for farming practices what we are using we are using chemical methods mainly by using chemicals we are killing it is useful in one side it is useful but it is indirectly polluting the soil and that is killing the life forms which are present in the soil right So biological control of pest and disease. For controlling this pest and disease in agriculture, there are several methods for, for what? For controlling the pest. Okay. And that in natural, through natural methods, we can control this. So organic farming. What do you mean by organic farming? Organic farming mainly it is aiming future health. Okay future biodiversity for maintaining the biodiversity and future health that is the aim of this organic farming so what this organic farmers are do doing nowadays you will get these are organic organic everywhere vegetables they will give in shops they will give and groceries also if you are going they will tell this is organic black gram this grown organically vegetables organic vegetables are there everywhere you can hear this word actually what does it mean or what do you mean by this organic organic means you can see there they are creating a system a system is created where that insects insects they're not completely killing the insect but instead of that what they will do they are keeping them in a manageable way see with chemicals we can kill the insects so instead of killing that because if, when you're killing the insect or the pest with the help of some kind of chemicals pesticide or insecticide if you're killing those organisms what is happening indirectly it is polluting the soil and it is killing other life forms also right which are useful it is killing those life forms also so what we should do instead of killing them we should keep them in a manageable level so there should be a balance a balancing system 
will be maintained in that ecosystem instead of killing that organism completely or eradicating that organism completely so organic farmers what they are doing that pest management instead of killing that complete pest they are keeping them in a manageable level okay so organic farmers holds the view that the eradication eradication of creatures so eradication of the creatures that are often described as pest is not only possible but also undesirable for without them that beneficial predatory and parasitic insect which depend upon them as food or host would not be able to survive so they are keeping them in a manageable level see they are they are, they are maintaining that uh, predatory system still they are managing that level where that crop or that crop is not at all getting affected completely they are not going to eradicate that organism instead of that they are maintaining their manageable level so bio control the use of bio control measures that will reduce the usage of this toxic chemicals okay so instead of using this chemicals toxic chemicals they can manage the pest in a bio control by using the bio control measures so instead of completely spraying some some kind of insecticide or pesticide and by killing that organism particular organism or a pest in that way they are keeping them in a manageable level so they are not depending upon that toxic chemicals and pesticides instead of that they are using bio control measures so what we need to do that biological farming that needs familiarity with different life forms how one life form is surviving or how that number is increasing what we should do to reduce the number of those organism and predator prey and predator that relation we should know and uh, which pest is affecting that crop and what is the reason for in number in increasing in the number or that total number raising in that number of that such pest that everything we should know first we should have instead of uh, blindly doing something we should have complete idea about that biological farming first we should know about the crop and what what and all in which stage what and all work we need to do for growing that crop and which and all pests are attacking or which and all diseases may affect that crop so what what and all we can do instead of spraying the chemicals or using the pesticides how we can control the level of pest or diseases in that particular crop so everything and the life cycle life cycle of that pest and pattern of feeding and their habitat everything we should have a complete idea about the disease disease cycle then about the pest everything so that we can reduce the usage of chemicals we can reduce the multiplication of this pest if we have a proper knowledge about their life stages and the feeding patterns and all so if you are knowing a crop completely completely in the sense in all aspects we should have complete idea about the crop so that's how we develop bio control okay so the use of this bio control method that will reduce the dependence on toxic chemicals and pesticides so if we have a complete idea about the crop we will never use the toxic chemicals so that is a very important part of biological farming and for that what we need to do we should be familiar with various life forms that is 
or uh, that means different diseases and that organisms which is causing that diseases then predators pest and uh, the life cycle of that then patterns of feeding then which kind of habitat they are preferring so we should have a complete idea that helps in the that helps to develop the bio control methods okay so next just i'll explain few examples for this bio control see this is the lady bird we used to say and uh, uh, tell lady bug also lady bird this is red and black marking the uh, this beetle this beetle is having red and black color so uh, in red color black dots will be there so this is very useful see he, here you can see this bug is useful in controlling aphids okay this is helpful in controlling the aphids then dragonfly this is a dragonfly here you can see this dragonfly they uh, they are helping to control mosquitoes they are very helpful in controlling mosquitoes dragonfly this is for mosquitoes they are helping in controlling this mosquitoes and here uh, this ladybird uh, this beetle it is helping to control aphids okay next is this is very important one bt nowadays the most important topic for discussion bacillus thuringiensis okay so bacillus thuringiensis that is another microbial biocontrol agent and for what purpose we are introducing this uh, bacillus thuringiensis to control butterfly caterpillars okay they are introducing to control butterfly caterpillars but uh, caterpillars of butterfly to control those we are using this this microbial biocontrol agent so now these bacillus thuringiensis it is available as sachet like dried spores it will be available and this we can mix this with water and we can spray this onto plants like uh, fruit trees we can uh, spray then brassicas then what will happen if you are spraying this these are eaten by insect larvae this insects larvae they will uh, eat the leaves which we have sprayed this so in the gut of that larvae that toxin will get released when the insects are eating this in the gut of that larvae that toxin will get released and that larvae will get killed so that bacterial dis bacterial disease that kills the caterpillar and that is not creating any harmful effect for other insects okay so that is a plus point that is the biological control how they are controlling this these are available in sachet small packets it's available as small packets and this we can mix with water how it, we are using this bacillus thuringiensis it is available as small sachet and we can mix this with water and we can spray onto plants which and all plants mainly fruit trees and brassicas we are using mainly so when these sprayed leaves the leaves which we have sprayed this that leaves when it is eaten by any insect larvae in the gut of that larvae that toxin will get released in the gut of that larvae and that larvae will get killed only that larvae but 
that larvae only that caterpillar but it is not at all affecting other insects and it is leaving other insects unharmed okay so this kind of developments this kind of important developments it is helping us to control the pest and diseases in a biological way then transgenic plants transgenic plants which are developed by genetic engineering techniques by using genetic engineering techniques transgenic plants are developed in that bacillus thuringiensis toxin genes they have introduced into plants Bas so in in the case of genetic engineering through genetic engineering they have developed bacillus thuringiensis toxin genes they are introducing into plants so those plants when the, this insects are attacking those plants those plants will be able to withstand or they can resist that attack of this insect plant so for an example we can say bt cotton okay bt cotton is an example bacillus thuringiensis toxic gene is present when the insects are attacking that is killing the insect or that uh, plant is able to resist or that can withstand the attack of that organism or that pest okay then another one is trichoderma the fungus trichoderma that is another biological control and that is developed for the treatment of plant disease actually this trichoderma species here you can see that trichoderma species they are free living fungi they are fungal species and they are free living and in root ecosystem they are very common they are very common in the root ecosystem okay in the root ecosystem this trichoderma species are very common and they can protect from several plant pathogens when it is present that will protect from plant pathogens next is baculoviruses they are the this baculoviruses means they are the pathogens and these pathogens they can attack other uh, arthropods and insects okay baculovirus baculovirus means they are the pathogens and they can attack insect and other arthropods so this baculovirus is mainly they are used as biological control agents biological control agents baculoviruses are mainly used as biological control agents and which genus mainly it is used nucleo polyhedroviruses these are the main genus which are used as biological control agents nucleo polyhedroviruses nucleo polyhedroviruses no down this they are mainly used as biological control agents baculoviruses okay then these Uh, baculoviruses they do mainly they don't have the plus point is that they don't have any uh, negative impact on that plants birds fish and all okay they are not creating any other problem for other organism okay so next Uh, this bio pesticide bio pesticides are also there they are uh, like some organisms uh, which we are applying on uh, some pest they'll directly destroy that pest and they are used uh, for weed uh, for killing the weeds or to destroy the weeds also then for killing the insect pest also we are using so there are two types of uh, bio pesticides they are uh, like two types are there bio herbicide and 
bio herbicide and bio insecticide bio herbicide means it is directly applying on that weeds herbicide it is killing the herbs then bio insecticide means it will be killing the insects so like that two types are there what is that bio pesticide they are killing the uh, there are of two types bio herbicide and bio insecticide bio insecticide means they will kill the insects and bio herbicide means they'll kill the herbicide or the weeds okay then chemical fertilizers what is the role of this chemical fertilizers chemical fertilizers for fast effect we are using chemical fertilizers right so that increases the yield also chemical fertilizers but what is the negative side this agriculture product we need more quantity because uh, the number of people or the population is increasing so demand for food that is also increasing so along with that there is no increase in the land area so from the minimum area we need maximum production so for that what we will do we'll apply large quantities of fertilizers and also that will give more yield but that increasing demand of agriculture that made us to apply or use more chemical fertilizers which is giving in turn more yield but other side what it is doing it is mainly contributing towards pollution actually it is creating pollution also this chemical fertilizers are creating pollution also so that pollution the high pollution or high polluting content of this chemical fertilizers that made us to think about the organic farming practices so that that is a large pressure because the pollution that is level of pollution or the polluting content of this chemical fertilizers that is increasing day by day so that is making us to think about organic farming that means the usage of bio fertilizers so what we need to use we need to use bio fertilizers okay so this bio fertilizers they are not doing any bad effect they are not creating any bad effect to the soil and to all or other organisms and all it's not killing any organism this organism which are present in the soil and all but instead of that that is helping to increase the nutrient quality of the soil this bio fertilizers they are the organisms actually bio fertilizers means they are the organisms bio fertilizers are the organism these are the organism which are helping in the improvement of quality of the soil so they are they are making the soil nutrient rich or they are making the soil these organisms that are that enrich the nutrient quality of the soil they are helping to increase the nutrient quality of the soil so the main source of this bio fertilizers are bacteria fungi and cyanobacteria so main source which are the main sources of bio fertilizer uh, bio fertilizers uh, fungi cyanobacteria and bacteria so in the common example is you can see the uh, leguminous bacteria we used to say about leguminous plants this leguminous plants what you can see this rhizobium rhizobium forms that will do the symbiotic association with root nodules of leguminous plants so note down all these points leguminous plants have symbiotic association with the rhizobium forms so the rhizobium forms symbiotic association with root nodules of leguminous plants okay 
so what this uh, bacteria this rhizobium uh, they will do they will fix atmospheric nitrogen into organic forms so uh, the nitrogen which is present in the atmosphere with the help of this uh, rhizobium species or this bacteria which are having symbiotic association capacity for symbiotic association they will fix atmospheric nitrogen into organic forms or the usable forms which can be used by the plants so this plants can use this fixed nitrogen because this leguminous plants they can fix they have the capacity to fix atmospheric nitrogen in a usable or in a organic form and with the help of which bacteria with the help of this rhizobium species they are able to fix the atmospheric nitrogen so this can be used by the plant so that that is used by the plant as a nutrient then bacteria like asospirillum asospirillum then acetobacter these also can asospirillum and acetobacter you can see here asospirillum and acetobacter they can fix the atmospheric nitrogen when they are living freely in the soil so that is also enriching the uh, nitrogen content of the soil so asospirillum and acetobacter these are free living bacteria they can Uh, live freely in the soil so while living freely in the soil they have the capacity to fix atmospheric nitrogen so that's how it is increasing the nitrogen content of the soil okay next is about mycorrhiza what is mycorrhiza actually that fungal association fungus that is also uh, forming some kind of symbiotic association with the um, the root of higher plants so that is called as mycorrhiza so fungus that forms symbiotic association with root of higher plants that is called as mycorrhiza in 11th standard we have already learned about what is mycorrhiza and how it is forming a symbiotic association with plants so uh, which genus the genus glomus here you can see the members of genus glomus that forms mycorrhiza okay glomus the members of this genus genus glomus that forms mycorrhiza or that helps in the formation of mycorrhiza so that fungal part fungal part what it will what it will do in that symbiotic association that absorb that fungal part is absorbing phosphorus from the soil and that will pass this phosphorus content to plants then these plants they are having association what that will do that shows resistance to uh, pathogens uh, root borne pathogens and that will show salinity tolerance drought tolerance then that's how it is overall what it will do overall it is increasing the plant growth and plant development but they'll be having the salinity tolerance drought tolerance and all so what is the benefit of this fungal part that fungal part is getting food then shelter in this association what is the benefit of that fungal fungal part that fungal part is getting food then shelter this fungus that will absorb phosphorus from the soil and that is passing into uh, or that passing this fu fungus is passing that phosphorus to the plant okay the plant what is the benefit of that plant so this association with this fungal association that will get resistance to root borne pathogens and it is getting salinity tolerance drought tolerance and all okay so overall what it is doing it is increasing the plant growth and development okay next comes about the cyanobacteria 
cyanobacteria means they are autotrophic microbes cyanobacteria it's common one and autotrophic microbes and it is distributed in aquatic and terrestrial environments both in aquatic environment and terrestrial environment the cyanobacteria they are distributed actually they are autotrophic what do you mean by autotrophic they are synthesizing their own food because they have the capacity to fix atmospheric nitrogen anabena no stock oscillatoria all this we have learned in 11th standard about anabena oscillatoria and all so in paddy fields and how it is working in paddy field center we are using how it is working because they are this cyanobacteria it is working as a bio fertilizer it is working as a bio fertilizer cyanobacteria in paddy field and all how it is working it is working as a bio fertilizer and next is blue green algae this is also increasing the fertility of soil so all this blue green algae cyanobacteria all these are increasing the soil fertility okay so the number of bio fertilizers they are available commercially in the market and farmers use this regularly in the field to replenish soil nutrients and to reduce dependence on chemical fertilizers so mainly what farmers are doing they are utilizing this bio fertilizers because that's how they, in market so many bio fertilizers are available so they are regularly using this bio fertilizers to increase the soil nutrient content the nutrient content of the soil and that's how they are trying to reduce the chemical fertilizers usage of chemical fertilizers okay so if you are using very less chemical fertilizers your soil capacity will get increased because soil all beneficial organisms are also getting killed with the usage of this chemical fertilizers so when you are not using or when you are depending upon the bio fertilizers along with the soil nutrient soil nutrients that soil nutrients also uh, will be existing there along with the helpful organism so there here indirectly we are not killing the organisms which are present in the soil okay and at the same time we are managing in a we are controlling all this in a manageable level okay so in our country so many fertilizers bio fertilizers are available in the market so we are encouraging farmers to use those uh, bio fertilizers why we are encouraging we need to reduce the usage of chemical fertilizers because it is indirectly affecting the health health as well as other organisms it is killing other organism that is spoiling the ecosystem the balance of that ecosystem is getting spoiled with the usage of chemical fertilizers so that's how we are encouraging farmers to use this bio fertilizers okay so these are the main points of this chapter so from this all direct questions you may get the questions like so we learned about very important microbes bacteria then antibiotics we have learned about antibiotics penicillin streptomycin and all and sewage treatment we learned then methanogens we learned about methanogens or biogas production then uh, microbes as bio control agents then microbes in the farming organic farming what is the role of microbes so finally what we can say microbes having very important role or they are pay, playing important role in the welfare of human society got it so from this for board exam what kind of questions you will get baker's yeast microbes what is micro what is fermenter uh, what is antibiotic then activated sludge you may get a question then biogas then for short answer type you will get about uh, the composition of this biogas what is uh, what is that what is biogas and what is the composition and usage then cyanobacteria and how they are helping in helping as a bio fertilizer what is bio fertilizer and 
backlow virus about backlow virus you may get about organic farming then bio fertilizer what is flock flock is an important question then antibiotic about antibiotic then about two three anti for example you have to give some antibiotics then dragonfly that uh, ladybird that beetle about that you need to write then mycorrhizal symbiotic association all this are very important but all these are direct questions this is a simple chapter you can score 10 out of 10 from this chapter then for long answer type what you will get uh, microbes role of microbes in household products then organic farmers why they are not recommending the chemical fertilizers or what is the reason for recommending the uh, organic fertilizers i mean organic uh, just now we said about the uh, bio fertilizers why they are asking to use the bio fertilizers then enzymes different enzymes and microbes so that's all about this chapter hope everything is clear do you have any doubt you want me to explain or repeat this you want me to repeat any point from this? Okay, just go through this chapter. If you have any doubt, you can ask me in the next class. Hope everything is clear. This is simple for NEAT as well as for board exam. This chapter is very, very simple. You can score full marks from this. Just read and for neat exam, especially the organisms, microorganisms name and what is the product or how it is useful in human welfare. That's what you want to learn. So that's all about this chapter. Thank you.